friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on March 14th, 2023. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet, and welcome to the Daily Do, giving you your space weather update as well. Earthquakes, volcanoes, and world weather. Always starting out here, looking at our sun at 304 angstroms, and we did have a little explosive eruption there in the northern hemisphere. Other than that, no major solar flares or CMEs thwarted our way. Another quick look there at the region that blasted off a CME. This is the last 48 hours incoming. No major sunspots cresting into view. Looking at outgoing here. Three sunspots turning away. Another closer look here at these two regions. And as well there, as we had that explosive eruption, northern hemisphere, plasma filament ripping away. One in the southern hemisphere fell back to the surface. Having a look at multi-spectrum here, you can see that halo CME effect in the first couple images. And as well pointing out the sunspot regions and a little plasma tornado in the northern hemisphere, right up at the pole regions of our sun. Amazing images brought to you by Solar Dynamics Observatory, mixed here with daily events worldwide. Look at 193 angstroms here, and this is where we can see our coronal hole regions, which would be darkened regions. One is turning away, it was pretty faint and diminished. Other than that, not much to report. Pretty quiet sun right now for solar flares, but Earth is definitely feeling the effect of a bombardment of a proton influx. Solar radiation storm impacts, minor impacts on high frequency radio in the polar regions. And it is visible on the DRAP, which we'll get into in just a moment. Solar X-ray flux showing two C-class solar flares today. And as well, noting there the solar proton flux, which is now up into the S1 range. And this is why. This is the DRAP. This is showing all of the highest, frequen highest frequency affected areas, north and south pole. Equatorial region pulse there over Africa from the C-class solar flare. Real-time solar wind was sitting at 397 kilometers per second right now. After being up to about 440 kilometers per second. But more noted here, 24.2 for the density bunches. That is our solar proton influx. ISWA space prediction spiral. Not much has changed since yesterday, still showing that CME taking off. Outgoing fashion, but set to give us a glancing blow 17th into the 18th of March. Looking here at LASCO 2, showing all of the last 48 hours of events on our sun. We were able to really see that halo CME on LASCO 3, which is the blue view. This red view here, we have to slow it down a bit, right here. There is that large halo CME blast. And as well, you can see all that proton charges coming towards us, all the flashy spots coming towards us in that is the proton flux. Schumann resonance for today, a low power of 14. And a little bit of a blackout there in the last few hours. Quality of 9.2, frequency max of 8.6. Now let's get to earthquakes past 24 hours. I did kind of warn yesterday in the update that we might have a large earthquake to deal with. And sure enough, pretty much just after the update last night, a 6.3 rang out at Papua New Guinea. At a 213 kilometer depth, eastern Papua New Guinea. Quick look here at the, the region that was shaking by the 6.3 earthquake. It was out in the ocean and just west of Long Island Volcano. 
where we have Wisdom Lake. Looks like this was a huge volcano at one time. Carrying on with earthquakes, pretty quiet through the Fiji region. 5.0 earthquake there, Solomon Islands. No deep earthquakes to talk about. 4.5 here, Western Indian Antarctic Ridge. As well, a pretty rare earthquake here. 5.5 Pacific Antarctic Ridge, 10 kilometer depth. And a 5.5 here in Labu, Chile, 7 kilometer depth. Lots of activity, Southern Hemisphere, as well the North. 4.5 there, Colombia, quieting down through Puerto Rico. Then we get to the United States where we had an earthquake swarm yesterday to talk about at Yellowstone. Now we're seeing it swarm here at White City, New Mexico, as well a 3.6 earthquake there in Seg Segun Segundo, Colorado. And then California and Nevada border. Deep Springs, California, 3.9 earthquake and swarming through the region. And then just recently, this just started, Trey Pinos, California, 3.4s kind of swarming there as well. Having a look at USGS, pinpoint exactly where these earthquakes are occurring. 43 earthquakes on the border with Nevada and California. Notable earthquake there, north of San Francisco, 2.4. And then this is where our other minor swarm is occurring, seeing about 15 earthquakes through the region. Yellowstone has pretty much calmed down for today, only reporting 20 earthquakes in the past 24 hours. Tanaga Volcano has quieted down as well. Alaska has been quiet the last day or so. Fours ringing out the West Ring of Fire. 5.4 earthquake here to report in Greece, 28 kilometer depth, as well a couple of earthquakes there in Turkey. And that's the last 24 hours for earthquakes. And this is a glance at the last seven days for shakers across the planet, noticing all the earthquakes heading up the coast of the North American plate and as well notable the few swarms that we've been talking about the last couple days so heads up stay safe and stay aware prepared that's what this channel is all about awareness and preparedness interesting activity in the southern hemisphere and then a little bit concerning with all the increasing activity through the north american plate north towards Alaska. Now let's get to weather here as we have quite a system here on the coast of the United States which dumped about 45 centimeters of snow through northeast regions as well very windy and cold through Ontario today. That's set to change for the next couple days and then back to the cold as this big system brews. North winds in behind it so watch for snow to fall as far south as Texas extreme weather to affect the Gulf states as that cold front pushes through. And then Ontario will see some rain, northern Ontario snow. And then we get to the west coast here where we still have two low pressure systems affecting California state and as well Oregon. Looks like lots of snow is falling through Oregon. And these systems will eventually push out with a high pressure ridge behind it. And then you can see in the Pacific there, some more systems coming in for California in the long range. This is now probably the ninth or 10th atmospheric river that will be affecting the state of California this year. Record amounts of snowpack and as well rainfall. Long range forecast here towards the end of the month, big low here affecting Eastern Canada and Eastern United States. Cold temperatures to follow with that. As I said, we are nowhere near spring, even knowing spring is right around the corner. Looking at the polar vortex here, showing cold air pushing down right towards the end of the month. Minus double digits through Ontario, Manitoba, and as well Alberta, Saskatchewan, and some pretty chilly temperatures 
higher elevations all the way down to the United States. Carrying on here to South America, no major weather conditions to report. Daily evaporation rains could be heavy at times through parts of Paraguay. And as well, coastal regions north and east of Brazil. Looking at South Africa here, Malawi has this. They've seen about 20,000 people displaced by Cyclone Freddy. Looks like it's finally leaving the continent, heading towards the Southern Hemisphere. Other than that, heavy rains through central regions in the Congo could be heavy this week. Overlooking a Europe. Get a cold high affecting parts of Norway, Sweden, Finland, and as well, low pressure system heading into the United Kingdom. Long range forecast. Warming up for the region, but not before dumping a bunch of snow here. And then another low pressure system comes into the United Kingdom for the 23rd, 24th. Some extreme weather breaking out through parts of Italy and eastward through the Mediterranean. Quick look, glance here at temperatures. Warming up through Australia. And we did talk about and saw a forecasted cyclone developing for northeastern parts of Australia. Not in the forecast anymore. Heavy rains for New Zealand Thursday into Friday. And then the only cyclone that we're going to see is going to be affecting northwestern regions of Australia. Quite possibly making landfall at the end of the month. Also got another cyclone there in the middle of the Indian Ocean. I'll have to keep a track on those. Leave you here looking at the Pacific Ocean, watching all of these systems head towards Alaska. And then long range forecast, more systems heading into California. Strange days ahead of us, some strange weather occurring. Thoughts and prayers to everybody affected. California floods and as well, everybody in Africa affected by Cyclone Freddy. Much love, stay aware and prepared, stay young and have fun. I'll get your daily do. Bye-bye now. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button, subscribe, share with your friends and family from across the world. Thank you.